All right, I call this meeting of the Tokyo City Council to order. Please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everybody. Um, so we're on uh, agenda item number three, Mayor's comments. Uh, I'm going to keep my comments uh, brief, except for to say the sad situation, the jail continues on. The merciful uh, good news is that even though we've only got 49 jail beds, uh, with the weather being so bad, crooks don't like to stick around so much when the, the river's high and the rains are heavy. But as the weather gets better, I expect the situation with the jail to get increasingly worse. And, Sadly, there seems to be no answers on the table for my friends at the county at the present time, but I know our business owners are going to keep being vigilant, and our Chamber of Commerce is going to be vigilant. And uh, if you're concerned at all about anything, just call the top. Uh, you know, even if, even if it turns out to be a small thing, just don't be afraid to pick up the phone and call one of our officers that are there to help. Um, all right, let's go on to council comments. Um, I'll start with Councilor Grant. No comment. All right, points for Brett. Um, uh, Councilor Eaton. Okay, well, I'll fill in. Uh, I uh, helped with carousel move from uh, downtown to the Jefferson School, and it was quite, quite an um, undertaking. I need to congratulate Linda for overseeing that. I would have pulled my hair out, but everyone worked hard. Um, also, the Garden Club, which meets tomorrow in the small auditorium at 1 last month, had a speaker on the CERT, the Community Emergency Response Team. And I did that course um, some years ago when it was pretty new. Now you get a whole bunch more goodies and a whole bunch more information. So I would urge everyone to take that CERT course. Um, I went to the Senator Merkley uh, reception and talk at Myrtle Point School and um, enjoyed that very much, especially the questions that the kids had for the senator. I thought they were very uh, well thought out. Um, I helped weed around the clock tower with the uh, members of the garden club, and it just about turned out into a mud wrestling, because we were wrestling with mud um, there. But we, we got some of the weeds out, and it should be a beautiful place this spring. And um, went to the Chamber of Commerce where Ben talked about um, the downtown area and, and that was very well done and well thought out as well, Ben. And that's it. All right. So you can see Council President Weiss isn't with us. Uh, he's out of town on vacation and he'll be back with us soon. Uh, Councilor Chappelle? No comment. Um, Councilor Schroeder? Well, I think Susan and I must do a lot of the same thing except I don't plant flowers. So I, I didn't do that, but I did go see Senator Merkley and the carousel. I guess up at Jefferson School. So we will be getting the word out as to uh, what days are going to be open and we'll be having lots of classes and we're going to do a lot more advertising. So uh, please, you know, ask any of us and we will be putting it in, in um, down in downtown in the windows and things. And we have a display in Kathy's window now and we're going to be doing a couple of other windows. That would be putting the carousel and all and things to help the carousel. So, anyway, please, any question, give us a call. Thank you. All right, thank you, Linda. Um, oh, I thought you had a question right there, Dave. I was looking at your hand over. Uh, Councillor uh, Kay Hart? Speaking of flowers, I had a red tulip blooming, and so I went out to look at it the other day and see where the others were. The deer ate. Oh down all the ones that were coming up their little noses went right down in there and they ate all the new stems so i probably won't have any tools this year but um i've been really busy our national president from alaska is coming for vfw in april and so i've been really busy working with all the vfw things went to conference at newport last year the last week and uh Miss Coos County is coming this Saturday night. Judy has tickets until Friday, so if anyone wants to go see Miss Coos County, there's lots of girls running. Um, and, in a large auditorium? It's at Hale's Performing Arts. It's what? always at Hale's Performing Arts. There's like 
600 seats there, I think. So um, it's always a good show, a lot of fun. Um, and then I went to Bay, well, three of us went to the, several of us went to Bay Fun Festival Saturday night and talked to lots of people and well, lots of different improvements for their area. So, anyhow, that's all. I'm just busy. Thank you, Fran. Uh, let's go to staff reports. As you can see, Chief Blue's not with us. Mr. Duffner's not with us, and Mr. Urban's not with us. But we've got their written reports, so if any members of the council have any questions regarding their departments, I know Ben will do his best to answer them. Um, so are there any questions regarding the finance, police, or public works reports? I know that's sort of a catch-all, but, um, uh, you know, uh, they're, they're in the packet. We've had time to read them, so if there are questions, now's the time. All right, then, hearing none, we'll move on to uh, the library director's report. Uh, Director Connor. Thank you very much. You have my report in front of you. This is a very exciting night for me. The construction committee, which had representatives from every area of the city, met and looked at the proposals that we got for our pre-design and made their recommendation to the foundation board. Foundation Board made their recommendation to you, and it's in your packet to act on tonight, if you could choose to do that. I, in my report, we have a complete staff. We have two wonderful new workers at the library, Tina Hallmark and Lori Gunther. They're friendly, intelligent, and very effective, very efficient working in the library, and we all get along really well. So come in and see us helping you. In my report, I talk about how one of our uh, disks in our server has, the storm did not fry it. It was defective. Uh, I bought it last <coughs> November, and it was under warranty. I sent it back to the company, and I just, at 5.30 tonight, got word from them that indeed it was a defective disk and they are going to replace it in three to five days. This morning, what? This morning is when I talked to our IT guy and he, an information technologist for the county system and he's now working at the Bandon Library. He's going to finish that up maybe this week. He's redoing everything, which really needs to be done. We're so outdated. So it might not be next week, it might be later <coughs> before he can install that because it will involve reconfiguring the hard drive. Our people have been so, so wonderful about living with that access to the internet at the library. Our Wi-Fi still works and if they bring their own devices they can get on the internet. But they have been very pleasant about the fact that yes, our computers are still down and you can't get on the internet. The Friends Foundation welcomes anybody that wants to come and help us put all of our books to get ready for another book sale. That's going to happen on Saturday, February 20th. One of the perks, if you help sort, is if you see anything you want, you can buy it right then and there. <laughs> and Team Trivia, we found a theme for it. The Land of Oz. The Wizard of Oz is going to be the theme. That's not what the questions will be. That's how you dress up. That's how you decorate your table. It'll be fun. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Well, I've already got a reserved name for a team, which is uh, Scarecrow's No Brainers. So. <laughs> oh, okay. Now, now, now. See, we have to, we're going to be. I gotta, I gotta lay my claim to that one now. The winning, the winning, the winning team name also gets a prize. Oh, as right. Matt knows. Forgive me, Councilor Heaton. That's, that's all right. Um, last year, we had a circulation of 6,071. This year, it was down about a third. Is there some reason? Right. I think you. it's. I think it's people are using their ebooks. Uh, we in that count. Is does not include how many books are being essentially borrowed from the library that downloaded from our ebook collection to which we subscribe. 
And I think that's part of the reason. I think our circulation is going up now that our internet is down. People are coming into the library and reading. It's very strange, but it's nice to see. Oh, and I know that sometimes from month to month also I'm being on the library board. And it's funny, you sometimes have these variations where there's no consistent reason why there is a fluctuation, but in the end, yeah. I think our circulation was actually up last year. Yes. By yes. the end of the year. It evens out. So it's on. It's interesting how the, the waves come there. Um, all right. Uh, anything else for the library director? All right. Hearing none, then we'll move to the fire chief's report. What do you got for us, chief? Uh, thank you, Mayor and Council. Good evening. I'd just like to highlight one thing on uh, my report. Uh, Saturday, February 27th is our 19th annual Pancakes for Life. Um, I'm really happy and glad to, to say over the last 18 years, Coquille Fire Department has been able to donate uh, close to $30,000 to the Burn Center for Children at Emanuel Hospital in Portland. Uh, that would not be um, uh, able to do that without the citizens' support of uh, such a great uh, event. So I'd just like to invite everyone to come down. Uh, we're not going to cancel it for many, many, many years. So whatever we make, we're going to donate to the kids up there. As, as you all know, uh, about a year and a half ago, we did have one of our Coquille kids uh, go up there. And uh, we were just blessed to be able to uh, have money up there to hopefully uh, offset some of his costs and surgeries and stuff. So now how, much, how much does it cost? Uh, it's uh, five dollars for adults and three dollars for kids. And what do you get? What do you get for your five dollars? Uh, all you can eat pancakes, ham, <laughs> eggs, and mayor they're big pancakes. I know they are. I know okay, they are. I'm on the orange juice, coffee, milk. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Oh, <laughs> but uh, but no, no, I'll still get my money's worth even if I do have to pay double. But uh, it's a great event. It helps a good cause. I welcome every. I, I, I hope everybody comes out to this. I know we, uh, we have an event also uh, later that night that I'm sure Kathy Simonetti will plug, uh, which is our chamber dinner. And so there's lots of cool stuff to do that day in Coquille. And uh, you can help out a great cause. Uh, now, I know uh, we talked at the last meeting about uh, the whistle, or the horn, or whatever you want to call it, at, at, the, at the fire hall. Um, I know Gene Ivey's been collecting signatures and some stuff uh, to that regard. Uh, do you have your surveys there? Yes. Want them now? Uh, yeah, I'm just as soon address the GP, uh, the, the whistle the, uh, right now when we've got the fire chief. Yeah. Oh, I know, but I'm, we're still, I'm dealing with, I just want to deal with the fire chief before we get to this. I just want to address this. Uh, all right, yeah, so what do you got there for us, Gene? Um, we have never had so many people be interested in a subject as the whistle. We had over 200 people come into the office. The first few days, I put it in the paper, in the first few days, we didn't think of having them sign something. Mm -hmm. So the third or fourth day, we thought, oh, well, well maybe we'll make these little things for people to sign. So, so it's more than this because we missed those first days. But uh, there are over 200 here. And most people took the time to write something on it. They're, what they used to do at the mill or why it's dear to them. And it's just one of the most dear things that has happened since I've been here. So I, um, some people even wrote it. That's good. It's just great. Well, I'll circle the side of this around a little bit. And um, the results were, I'm assuming, overwhelmingly in favor of the whistle, or what, because you didn't say what the general skew of the results were. The general skew, well, I separated those into packets so you could all look at them. And there are no, um, you know, they're all, we didn't copy any. They're all just, each packet is different. But uh, as I was doing that, I, of course, did have to notice there are two no's and then 220 yeses and <laughs> so there's your answer. Well, it's actually the council's answer. So. And, yeah. Well, you know, um, uh, Marcus were really interested in that, you know, when their father's passed away in El Aldo Senior. But he worked on that too for a long time. To get it. There's a letter. There's a letter in there from, um, What's his name that used to be the attorney here at the time? Al and, Walsh. And he, Al Walsh. And he told, he tells about 
that, Down and it's included yeah. in that. Did you read that? Oh. Well, then. Yeah, one one of those packets is right on top, and it says Al Walsh letter. One of you has that. That's mine. Okay, maybe you could. Hey, has that Walsh letter been tested for its decibel wave? Uh, ne never has, no. Actually, this runs off of um, air out of a thousand gallon tank, where at GP it actually ran off of steam, but we've never had decibel checks on it, no. Um, if I may. Well, sure. Jean, when I first came to town, of course the whistle was there and sounded. And it sounded, I think, at 10 o'clock in the morning, and I would have my mid morning cup I of know. coffee. And then it would sound at noon, and I would have you lunch. You knew when to have lunch. And then it would sound at five, and I would have my glass of wine. But you know what? I can do the coffee, the lunch, and the wine without it. Oh. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I think the quiet is better than the, the siren. Well, I. Uh, I just have to tell you, I have never had so many people read some of those, Susan, okay. and you'll, you might change your mind. Uh, and, and I've heard from a number of citizens about this, too. Uh, I'm not sure some members of the council have heard about this, too. Um, this impresses me. This is uh, public participation in the, in the city government. Um, is there a, um, do you need a motion on this, or, uh, or just a general consensus of the council? <laughs> Oh, that's uh, if Fran wants to read it, then share it. You want me to read it? Yeah, if you'd like to. Okay, this is from Al Walsh, who used to be uh, an active attorney, and he's retired now. But he said, regarding the GP whistle, and it's to address to Gene, you probably know all of this, but if not, it might be of interest. I was the attorney for the Coquille Rural Fire District for many years. We had a member on that board, also for many years, named Aldo Marcus Sr., now deceased. After the GP mill was raised, Aldo started a one-man campaign to have the whistle installed at the fire hall. It was not an easy task, and there was some dissension, but he persevered. He felt strongly that since GP had been such a prime presence in Coquille, the years that it was a fitting tribute. I believe the current Fire Chief Waddington might be able to fill in some of the trials and tribulations since its installation. I would, I would like to know, um, Chief, apparently it went out, and have you gotten estimates on resurrecting it? Uh, not not price wise, but we believe the the timer and the valve up at uh, top of the tote or hose tower uh, we have to replace that valve and the timer. My rough estimate would probably be close to maybe five hundred dollars to try to get that up and, and running for that. Myself and the retired uh, fire chief McHugh uh, put that in about probably nineteen ninety two ninety three at the station. The rural board did step up. We didn't have an air compressor for any of our trucks or any of our air type tools and so uh, the rural board um, with the contingency that we were to blow the whistle we could get an air compressor within the station and so we applied to be able to do that. Um, uh, yeah definitely overwhelming with the, the yays for it but uh, I definitely do hear uh, when it was blowing a lot of nays from people just walking around. Uh, I think that could address Councillor Graham's uh, concerns maybe about a decibel level. Um, it's very loud as far as U.S. Bank, uh, Coquille Automotive. Um, I had the misfortune of being up on the roof one time and the crowd it was close to noon. Um, and that was, that was a shocker uh, for that. But uh, I'd be more than happy to do whatever the council wishes to do. Um, We've even talked about, you know, is there somewhere else that uh, a group could take that, uh, be in charge of that, um, but everything is in place at the station now uh, 
to be able to do that. So. Okay, you lower the decimals. I don't know that much. Uh, I, so probably with just with the valve. Probably how much air comes through that valve. Mm -hmm. It's actually a uh, about a two inch line that goes up to the um, uh, horn itself, mm -hmm. and uh, for seven seconds that the whole tank opens up and takes the, the thousand gallons of air and just rushes up to that. So. Uh, based on probably the valve that we put in, you probably could lower that, but I'm not an expert on that. So, well, that's oh, sorry. Did you have something, Dennis? I could. Oh, I know as deaf as I am. I've been downtown when that thing goes off. It'll wake you up either way. <laughs> How about a lawsuit? So, you know, something like an heart attack. You ever heard about that? The liability. Well. Gina, I think, should be congratulated for an effort. But I wonder if another person against the horn, put out the same effort, would get equal wait, or more. Wait, wait, I, I think you're well, 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 mistaken. Well, I, I, I can't have the, the, the back and forth like this from the audience, Gene. I, well, I, it I wasn't, appreciate what you've done here, but... It wasn't an effort on my part. I just put in what you what you guys said last last meeting, and I'm, I promise, what, I mean, it wasn't an effort. Well, no, that, that's fair. No, I'll, I'll let, I'll, but I appreciate your comment there, Gene. And I understand where you're coming from, Susan. That said, I did say I'd like to have a vote on this. So if there's any, I mean, you know, we'll see, uh, the people will see what uh, the council pleases to do on this. So is there any motion uh, at all to uh, uh, fix the whistle? I make a motion that we fix it and have it reinstalled. Councilor Chappelle makes a motion. Is there a second? Councilor Kate you Hart bet. seconds. You bet. Uh, discussion? Yes, I'd like to see if you get the desk down a little bit then. If you're going to do that. No, I'm, I'm also for it. I'm going to vote for it, but I would like to see if that's a concern. That, was yeah. that, would, uh, do you want that in your motion, Dave, or do you just want to just go straight to the issue? And if, if, yeah, uh, to lower the decibel level. Well, we don't even know what it is. So I think that that can be a staff discretionary decision removed from facing the whistle. Um, um, but, um, all right, uh, Fran, did you want to say something? Yeah. Just all for it? Yes. It's just that there's only one no in this packet. What is this one? <laughs> All right. Most of the people want it. Is there any uh, further discussion? I, yes, I would like to know if, indeed, before we vote on it, how much it would cost and if you could lower the decibels and table these. <clears throat> oh, no, well, there was, um, um, so you're making a motion to table this, but that's, you made the motion, you seconded it, so you guys have to consent to tabling it. Uh, um, so, I mean, would you prefer to just address this now? Because I think the people, I mean, in my opinion, deserve both. No, I think these people have gone to the point of, of doing this. Gene, you went to the, you went to the, 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 the trouble, I guess for lack of a better term, to, to do this. And people had the option to vote yes or no, period. Okay. Let's just address it now. Let's get it, let's get it taken care of. And in our years on the council, have we ever seen this kind of output? I, I, oh, I think this no. is great. I'd like to say something, too. I think that if this many people are for it, I bet it's going to cost you, like, say, $500 or something. Well, I'll I give them $500. I'm just going to say, I bet people would donate. <laughs> well, you know, donate. People would donate if they feel that's not oh, yeah. Right. yeah, and that's what I was going to ask. You know, I mean, sure. Does it come out of my fire budget to no. fix that? No, no, or no. I think bring you back a cost, and then we find the funds? So. Right. And, and we have. Uh, if we've got great citizens. I said they would step up to help sure. donate. No, I don't think they come out of the fire fund. I think no. okay. some of us are you good or something. Well, let me just say this. I'll get on the dunk tank again. We could probably at least raise five hundred dollars for it. I'll do it uh, if we got it. I mean, I'll, I'll raise the money on the dunk tank if we have to. Yes. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna. I mean, hell, if you if you need the money, I would my, my company would be more than happy to give you the five hundred dollars to do. And this has been questioned. <laughs> my answer question: Where the council stands on this whistle? So um, we still have the motion on the floor. Is there any further discussion uh, to the motion? All right. Now, oh, Chappelle, we need you to vote. I think I know how you're going to vote. I'm for it. Oh, okay. Well, you can you can say aye from over there. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, opposed. No. So. We have a majority of the council of four voting for it, so it passes. You know what you got to do, and we can come up with the money somehow. I'm confident of that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank All you right, so thank you, citizens. Ben, wouldn't that come out of? Are city permits that are coming in for the budget? I think that should come out of city promotions or 
Oh, I, I, I heard money coming from outside of the city. You know, oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think we can privately raise money. Anybody want to vote against? I'll kick in two and a half dollars. Okay. 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 I know we got bogged down in this, I just felt the folks deserved an answer and the council uh, stepped up and even if you th didn't vote for it, you gave them an answer though and that's all that they can be asked to do. So, um, and again, Pancakes for Life, February 27th, for a great cause, show up and uh, get your fill of pancakes. Thank you, uh, sir. All right, um, um, City Manager's report. Uh, ben, anything in addition to your written report? Uh, first, I'm going to jump back to the Public Works Director's report because in there he did have two grants that he wanted to let the council know about and um, just is the council desirous of pursuing both those grants. One is <clears throat> to replace the, the boat dock at Sturdivant Park and we would also pursue uh, funding from Fish and Wildlife that would allow part of the dock to be for fishing which for years has been fished off of, but the Marine Board hasn't appreciated that. The new dock would be for both boats and fishermen. Uh, the other grant would be a grant with the Oregon State Parks for a trail, uh, specifically up in uh, 100, what we like to call the 100 acre wood behind Irving and uh, South Burst. And uh, is that a, a project that we're interested in pursuing right now before we put in for the grant? Tony go ahead with his deal and give it to the city? Not yet. The, um, so the appraisal came back and it was too low. Uh, there was about a difference of 15000 uh, We communicated back to the agent, well, would he accept payment of the difference? Uh, would that meet their needs? Because we could get that payment funded by the grant for land acquisition. Um, or we could come up with the funds um, somewhere in the city budget and then use that entire amount uh, to as match. And that could leverage quite a bit of state parks money. Uh, so that we, I don't think we have an answer specifically on that question yet, but uh, the opportunity is definitely there. And I think the the initial reaction was that there's probably a way to figure this out. So they're still encouraging. So you're basically asking about three or four things. Well, two things on uh, these two grants. Should we pursue these grants? Okay, so the first one is the Marine Board, one for the new dock. Um, well, uh, could you clarify again the second one? Forgive me there, Ben. The so second one is for a, a trails grant. Up in the hundred acre woods. Okay. The so one grant for hundred acre woods is that going to come out of recreation, state parks recreation trail program? Yes. How's that going to impact the Riverwalks grant application? Uh, I'm not sure. We have a couple of ideas about that. One, we send a message to Salem that we are very excited about parks and they should invest here. Uh, two. The um, Riverwalk is coming back for its third time to request, and it's due. And this one would just be an introduction to the other trail system. And there's a chance that they could both be funded because, you know, I think the fifteen thousand dollars we'd have to ask for that trail grant would be or so insignificant that they might just give it to us. All right, uh, any other uh, council uh, questions regarding the grants? Are there any objections to pursuing either of them? I have a question, the second one. I kind of feel like the same way that, that uh, uh, Dennis does as far as uh, you know, doing another one just because I don't want to take it away from the Riverwalk chance. So, so one of the rules is one agency cannot have two grants open at the same time. And the thought is that as two separate agencies, the city, independent of the Riverwalk, uh, could be pursuing a separate grant at the same time. And it's really about getting on their radar. Uh, I, I doubt that the one would preclude the other from getting funded, uh, at least the Riverwalk. 
Right, that's that's our first priority. All right. So you're not looking. Are you? You're not looking for a motion. You're just looking for consensus regarding the grants. Yes. Um, I have no uh, opposition to seeking either of them. I don't know how the rest of the council feels, though. I mean, if you guys want to support one or the other, it's just good to let Ben and Kevin know where you're at. Well, I'm all over the dock. Yeah. I think that kind of question uh, exactly have a lot of Well, then maybe we uh, need more information on the second one, then. Uh, is, is that what you're thinking? Well, one concern I have is our, our trip master plan, we, uh, the last meeting we had, we stated that we need to work on existing parks before we start expanding our park system. And this is contrary to what, you know, the Parks and Recreation Committee requested. So. Well, then I think you've got your answer. There's a blessing, there's a unified blessing on the dock. Uh, it sounds like we need more information on the second. Sounds fine. Thank you very much, Ben. And, uh, anything else? Um, uh, thank you. I <clears throat> did get some notes of some uh, corrections on the emergency preparedness event, but I, I do want to say that that has been very well received in the community. We have uh, three sponsors now. Uh, our signature sponsor is First Community Credit Union at $1,000, and they've already paid. And right behind them are Northwest Natural Gas and Comspan uh, as silver sponsors. So that's wonderful, and we're getting people excited about this event. It'll be Saturday, April 16th. Uh, I'm sorry, I did not have a, a cost estimate for the improvements on the downtown revitalization plan. Uh, I had some back and forth with Pacific Power and they provided me additional information and uh, I am waiting on the Dyer partnership to get us some estimates on what our share of that cost might be. All right, Fran, you had something? Yes, yeah, so if you already sent out this, are you prepared? Yes. Well, I can so much stakes in that. I, I, thank you. And <laughs> I've got them noted, and we'll be correcting and updating it so that if anyone else downloads it off the city's <laughs> website, it'll be correct. <coughs> All right. Okay, uh, and then one other question I was going to ask Kevin. What's going on on Fairview Bank? Yes, uh, Sunday morning, uh, it was found that the road was collapsing. There was an old culvert under the road uh, that had rusted out all through the top and uh, <coughs> it went all the way across the road. Uh, emergency personnel got on it, barricaded the road. Uh, this is going to have a significant impact on our local economy. Uh, I had a call from Milky Way Feed today because they're very concerned about how this is going to impact their business. Uh, they rely on uh, many large truck deliveries each week, uh, about 12. And even though they're, they are at the end of the line for a lot of these trucks, so the trucks aren't fully loaded, they're just making the last drop off at Milky Way feed. But uh, these trucks are too long to legally go down Lee Valley Road and go around. Um, and when a milk truck is fully loaded, 10,000 pounds, it can can't really make it up Hungry Mountain very well. And so they're, they don't have many options and um, we'll be looking into that further to see if there isn't something we can do to assist them and keep their business on life support. Uh, but this is a county road and uh, they're also working with the county to see what the county's time frame is for getting it fixed. The biggest obstacle, frankly, is the weather. Uh, it's, the water table is very high, the ground is saturated, especially right there, you, you can see the, the standing water backing up in the field. You can't replace the culvert because you can't get com compaction in wet ground. And so, in order to do the job, they're gonna have to wait till it dries out, probably late summer, uh, before you can reset the culverts and, and rebuild the road. So, I'm hoping they can find another solution in between time. Uh, Mr. Scaleri suggested there might be uh, a portion of a bridge that they could lay down to bridge the problem, but the continuous concern through the season is going to be the continued erosion from all the wet weather. So that's, that's the situation. All right. Uh, anything else for Ben? Thank you, Ben. And uh, oh, yes. Thank you on his report on the um, municipal judge. Yes. Him. Have we had any other 
people interested in that? And yeah. will we meet anybody who is interested? The, this is the best opportunity we've had in two years trying. And uh, this is our pro tem judge uh, who I was originally told about a year ago incorrectly that they were not a bar certified attorney, but they are. And they are interested at this time in uh, serving as the permanent municipal judge for Coquille. And uh, she's going to be here tonight, but uh, Ms. Pat uh, Davis will uh, be here next month and would be happy to talk about her qualifications with the city council. No more she city has experience creating municipal courts, working in municipal courts, and has some ideas on how to help us. In fact, she's already working on them with our city attorney. And by the way, for the folks in the audience who may not know this, everything we're referring to is in this packet, which you can get on the city website or at the library. And so uh, the information on the judicial applicant uh, is there in the packet. Um, it's a lot of useful information, and you can just get it very easily. Um, before we move to public comment, I need a point of personal privilege. I need a five-minute recess, so we'll reconvene at 7.42. Thank you.